and keep it updated. So um, when we're talking about um, catfish farming, there are three major things that I will want to talk about today. That is an overview of fisheries and aquaculture generally. I hope everyone is hearing me. If you're not hearing or seeing me clearly, please let me know. Thank you for coming. Then also, I'll be talking about choosing your niche. And I'll talk about some co core factors you have to consider when going into catfish farming. Because if you don't understand this basic concept, you might find it difficult catching up in the coming classes. Because those classes will be more expensive. Okay? Um, we can't discuss catfish farming without understanding the concept of two basic things, which is one, fisheries, and the other is um, aquaculture. Yeah, um, both are the same and still a bit different. Both sound the same. That is why I'm talking about it today. Like, in as much as aquaculture and fisheries are relative, there is some slight difference. Fisheries include um, both inland and mainland fishing, processing and sale of fish, shellfish, and fish produce. And it's most of the time practiced in the world as mostly when you see fishermen going to the sea to cast their nets, going to the to the water bodies, cast their nets. They didn't grow this fish. They just go there. Like nature produces this fish, they go there, the shellfish, the 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 other um, living organisms in the water, they just go there to catch this fish and rely on nature to recreate or reproduce the fish for them to use. It's, that's why I said it's mostly practiced in the wild and in um, maybe um, areas around or inside water. Then aquaculture on the other hand is fish farming. Yeah, it's fish farming. It's, a, it's related and a little bit different. It's the natural or controlled cultivation of aquatic plants and animals in a medium yeah aquaculture in itself is a science that covers research study cultivation commerce it's a business that covers a wide range of um, aquatic organisms such as fish shrimps oysters and the likes of it and it's a solution to ocean congestion and pollution it is one of the major keys to sustainable fisheries yeah um if you've been following me you would see that there was one post i made at some point and i said um i quoted somebody that it says, you know, we have to to not just hunt, but we have to, to create, to cultivate. So that's it. Um, if you've been following the world news in food, agriculture, climate and all that, you'll see that a lot of things are happening, global warming, climate change, and you'll see that there is a projection that by 2050, we might not have food to eat. Yeah, you have money, you will not have food to eat. You understand what I'm trying to say? Like, there is a lot of um, hunting. It's not just in fisheries alone, not just in aquaculture, not just in food production alone. Like, there is a lot of just mining, hunting things, and not um, putting into consideration of how another is, is going to be there. Like, nobody is putting replenishment into consideration. A lot of species of um, whatever it is are going extinct. Because we just keep hunting them for games, hunting them for food, and we are not thinking about how they would be back there. And this has been disrupting the ecosystem, disrupting a lot of things, disrupting existence so much that if we are not take, if we are not um, taking care, if care is not taken, by 2050 there is going to be a crisis that is not even war. It's not physical war of using um, guns or what have you, but a war where people have money and can't get food to eat. I pray and hope it doesn't get to that. And if we don't want it to get to that, it starts with me, it starts with you. Okay, so I was saying that it is one of the major keys to sustainable fisheries. Yeah, the most practiced aquaculture in Nigeria is um, catfish production. And Nigeria happens to be the largest producer of catfish in Africa. And it's like the second biggest in cultured fish production. Yeah, so... Um, Nigeria has really made a name for themselves in the aquaculture industry. They've been doing a lot in aquaculture and they've been doing a lot of um, paid, of, of paid culture, the um, production of fish. And uh, basically, we've been producing catfish for many other countries, which is something we should look critically into. If we are saying we want to improve our economy, we want to improve with agriculture, I think since there is so much demand for catfish, 
basically looking cuter. So today I'll be talking about um, choosing your niche. Yeah, a lot of people come to me and say, I want to be in the farming, I want to be in the farming. How can I invest? I, some will say I don't want to get my hands dirty. Some will say I don't understand the technicalities that um, come with food production or animal production or animal husbandry or catfish production or whatever it is you want to go into. And um, if you've been following my sessions, from this is like the eighth episode now, each episode I've always brought somebody in the probably the agribusiness industry in a, a line of food production someone in the value chain someone in politics or economics yes we can't remove politics and governance and we can't remove economics from the matters of agriculture or agribusiness if we want to succeed at it we have to consider all of that so basically each and everybody has always mentioned something which i've also always told people everybody cannot be producer of food Especially because sometimes I ask myself, if all I do is wear fish, how am I different from that man who did not um, go to school or who did not um, go to study agriculture or who did not go to learn farming in a professional environment? How am I different from him? Then um, how am I going to even break even? Because of course, I would spend more in production. Yeah, because I have my nine to five job. I have other stuff I do. I would have to em employ more hands than he will. I would have to invest more of my productive time. At the end of the day, I would have to still sell at the same rate he sells or even sell at a lower rate. So what's the point? What am I doing? What makes the difference? Why did I go to school for five years? Why did I go for all of that? Why did I go to further my education? Why did I go to get some professional touch? So that is why I'm, I'll be talking about this today. Aquaculture and catfish farming, to be specific, is go beyond just uh, wearing fish. And here I have listed out some aspects of it, and which is not limited to fish because the world is evolving. But I've tried to put everything I know under this point. One, we have the hatchery and the breeding. Yeah, it's a business on its own. We have the grow out production, it's another business on its own. We have the preservation and processing, we have the marketing and sale, we have the recycling and the circular economy aspect, we have the feed and nutrition aspect, and we have the research aspect. Now, I'm not saying this, these niches don't stand alone, and it's not limited to fish. Like, you could, I could be a hatcher and still be a grower farmer, I could be a grower farmer and still go into preservation and processing, I could be in the ma just the marketing. I could decide to be a hatcher. Even it's so intertwined in the sense that as a hatcher, you are still a marketer one way or the other. As a grow out farmer, you are still a hatcher one way or the other. As as a nutritionist or a feed uh, producer, you are still doing sales and all. But of course, there is always um, the basis. And sometimes, especially if you are coming into agriculture for the first time or fish production for the first time. Or whatever it is you want to go into in the agribusiness value chain, I'll, I'll advise to start, especially as a small scale person or small scale farmer, I'd advise to start with one. First of all, you may later become multi, whatever you might later have with your empire, even if you have the money. For technical reasons, I'll still advise that you start with one. That's my advice. So um, when I talk about hatchery and breeding, it's it um it's a bit uh, of a very sensitive matter because that is where life begins. Whatever aspect of agriculture, you want, of agriculture you want to practice, whatever aspect of catfish farming you want to practice, you have to you have to put that into consideration. It's the sensitive sector because without the hatchery and breeding sector, then there will be no catfish business in the first place. So this is where breeders and nurturers come to play. Of course, without, without procreation, there is no life. Unlike in the wild, this is one of the reasons, this is one of the things that distinct aquaculture from fisheries. Unlike in the wild, we have fish meat and we procreate on impulse. Aquaculture involves taking control, like taking charge of procreation. First, the breeder has to collect mature male and female adults known as broodstock and raise them in conditioned environments while placing them on specific diets. 
this process is more technical than it sounds and it should be treated as a separate topic and like i told you that most of the things i'll be discussing today are separate topics that need to be treated separately and i'll be bringing in colleagues of mine in subsequent sessions where we'll discuss each of these um, topics in depth so um and it sounds uh, 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 they, are, they, they will be fed on feed formulated specially for gonad development yeah that gonad development is like trying to develop their reproductive system towards because of course if you especially the the, the breeds that you buy for commercial purpose when you buy them and the kind of feed you buy to feed them most of the time is just to fatten and to nourish them for um, consumption purpose. So if you want to go into breeding, into hatching, you have to take cognizance of that fact and um, work towards that. So, um, and they must not be related. Yeah, you don't um, bring uh, two cousins, male and female, and want to reprocreate or to, oh, I had this batch of uh, I have this batch of feeding two different ones. This is a, this is a male. This is a female. Then um, let me cause them so that I can have. Oh, and they were very nice fish. They grew very big. They grew fast. So it's better I just cross in between. No, you don't have to do that. So um, there is what we call selective genetic breeding, and this uh, alone is another um technical term, another part, another aspect. It's, in fact, it's even another profession, so to speak. It's a process in which experts pick parent stock with certain preferred dominant traits, cause them to achieve certain results, and um, some of these traits, these traits that they look for in um, the the parent stock, they could include hardiness, they could uh, be resistant to specific diseases, they could be the um, their growth rate. Maybe some are, some grow very fast. It could be because some are highly prolific. Yeah, and the obligation of a good hatcher is to collect traceable good stocks with such outstanding traits and use them to hatch high quality fish seeds. And um, there is so much more to this. There is so much more to hatching. Like, um, for instance, in Nigeria, we are we are um, experiencing a lot of inbreeding depression. Yeah, somebody will tell me. I'll get to a hatcher. He will tell me, Ah, my fish, um, my brood stocks are. So like i had to go pick one all the way from abuja and i picked uh, the female world in lagos or something but um truth be told we are still practicing in breeding yeah because um like every fish in nigeria are relatives to be honest okay let me explain i i have a pond in elori somebody comes from abuja to buy my mature fish and takes them he sees some of them, he picks them and separates them in the pond and says, um, these are his good stocks. He starts to condition them and um, he later uses them. Then um, I say, I want to buy fingerlings. I go back to him. I call him in Abuja and say, please send me fingerlings or send me juveniles. Then I stop. Then I say, oh, I went all the way to Abuja to bring my fingerlings or what have you. So you see, it's it's um, complicated but um in another session we'll be discussing how to control this how to overcome this then um let me go into the grow out okay sorry i'm also checking my screen in case there is any question or comment so there is this other niche so what I'm saying in excellence, sense, okay, why I'm going into all this is that you could go to, you could get training in hatching and breeding and decide to just be a hatcher or a breeder, so to speak, and start that as a business. You don't have to like be jack of all trades, especially when you're starting. So that's one aspect. That's one business part of catfish farming. Then I go to the grow out. You could decide not to because um hatching it, it requires a lot of time hands-on a lot of intensive practice yeah, yeah it's like it's just like when a woman probably has um a premature baby and the baby is in intensive care and all that in incubator like 
they monitor the babies, they check and everything. That is how um, hatchery is like. So um, some people may not have that luxury of time to dedicate. So instead of putting the business at in, at jeopardy, instead of um, just wasting resources, you could decide to not play in that sector and just go straight to the grow-out sector. So the grow-out sector involves buying fish seeds such as fingerlings or juveniles to wear in a cultured medium. The cultured me medium might be plastic pond, it might be tarpaulin pond, it might be concrete pond, and it might be etin pond. This again is another topic that we would discuss extensively. Yeah. So it can also be reared in a cage culture or water bodies such as dams. Some examples of um, cage culture, if you've been to Owena Dam in Ondo State, if you've been to Ikere Gorge in Oyo State, if you've been to Onyo Dam in Ogo State, strategic places like that, you would find um, cages, the cage culture. The cage culture, culture, again, is also another topic we can discuss um, separately. So, um... The size you intend to grow will depend on your financial capacity, your stocking, wow, stocking density, and your target market. So it's most important to have a specific market target before growing your fish, and you need to be sure you have the financial provision to feed to target harvest size. Yeah, um, because you can't um, put fish in water without having um, a sure source of feeding them till that particular age. You're going to shoot yourself in the leg yeah why i said you shoot yourself in the leg is this um it's a bit technical feeding of fish is quite technical in the sense that most of the time as a seasoned catfish farmer over time you already know the quantity of feed give or take that you give sat, um, a certain size of a fish maybe juvenile or fingerling to a particular time to get a particular size of course, some factors may come into play, but generally, it's usually like that. So if you've planned that, if you, you're, you're supposed to feed your fish with a quantity of feed for three months, most of the time, I would advise you already have the money for that quantity of food. In fact, I would advise you don't to make the deposit paid your distributor. Because once you start defaulting in feeding the fish at the, at the expected time, you go out of feed for the next 24 hours, you go to hustle, look for money, and start feeding again in 48 hours time. In fish farming, we calculate time. Time is of essence to us. We calculate um, feed conversion ratio. We calculate weight gain. You're targeting a certain weight at a, cert for a, at a certain period of time. If you missed it, then you're already running at loss. So it's imperative and it's important that you put all this into consideration. So um, that is why I said there are other sectors in fish farming. As we go further, you will see other options that you can go to in the meantime when you don't yet have enough money to rear, to, to rear fish because rearing fish is not a child's play. Financially, you, 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 you have to, to have um, a certain that you'd be able to feed them to the end. So um, the size you intend to go will depend on your financial capacity, your stocking, and your target market. And it's most important to have a specific market. You may decide to produce the smoke size fish. Um, there is no um, one size fits all. Sometimes it's also region specific or um, geographically specific. But of course, um, most of the time, by the time you have all your 300 grams of fish, three, 350, 400 grams of fish, that's your smoking size, and some people call it different kind of name in different regions. And at that point, you you can sell. That is one market. Most of the time, it's these people who come to buy fish and sell the household, or who come to smoke them, that will buy those um, set of fish from you. Then um, you may decide um, also to, to do this table size thing. There is the 500 to 700 grams range also. There's a target market that comes to buy that. And there is this um, up to one kg and above. There's a target market that comes to buy that. So um, you need to be specific. Who do you want to sell? You could also play in the three ranges. Yeah. You could um, subsection your ponds and then stock. Knowing fully well, okay, this pond at three to 500 grams, I'm sending them up. 
this bond at 700 to 500 to 700 grams and selling them this bond at about one kg upward and selling them so that there is always activity like you don't have to stay all through for the next six months without um commercial activity so with time when you start farming and all that you you yourself would um begin to understand this concept and begin to plan your cropping towards that so um another um sector that i would like to touch is the preservation and processing which is also called value addition and it's it's quite unfortunate that this is more like one of it's like the most important aspect of catfish farming and a lot of people are not looking into it fine um it's it can be capital intensive depending on the scale at which you want to do it and um some sometimes i think it's we need the intervention of maybe government or investors to have structures like this put in place even if we can't afford them and i'll tell you why if you look at the fish industry right now there is a lot of issues that the farmers are facing there's been the COVID-19 pandemic there's been the lockdown excuse me there's been the the ban on movement the especially night movement now how does this apply most of this live fish that we sell most of us are used to just selling our fish live we already when it's too rich to harvest we call every everybody that used to buy from us oh god my fish don't ready you come by and come by and okay great then these people come to buy them and then distribute to maybe bars restaurants hotels nightclubs what have you they make barbecue there they do all that catfish pepper soup for the past um one month now all these um, avenues have been closed and shut down by the government so the demand for it has dropped that's all secondly for instance a lot of farmers in Ilori, in Ekiti, in Ondo state rely on people who come to pick their fish all the way from abuja asaba and those other places they've been having even as much as food and agriculture is essential of course you have to move they've been having difficulties coming all the way to pick these fishes so what is the fate of the farmer one he has targeted that at this point i'm going to sell this fish he has um, budgeted the amount of money he's going to spend on feed he already knows the weight he's going to sell this fish some have even run out of the feed and don't even have the money to spare to get more feed to keep feeding so what's going to happen this is where processing and preservation comes in do you even know that i i always laugh when they say there's fish glut and um, and the middlemen are pricing the fish at unfavorable rates and people just have to succumb and sell to them it's painful you know why there is a lot of market for catfish outside of nigeria like we don't even the truth is we don't have enough to supply but because we've been unable to add value we've been unable to preserve and process this fish it becomes something that um, people now treat with scorn and begin to to offer unfavorable and unreasonable prices that is why you see a catfish farmer is so poor while the middleman who is playing in that market is making so much money and so much profit the farmer will labor for three months four months five months six months even eight nine months is going on with little, little or nothing so this is an aspect we need to start looking critically into everybody should stop rushing into production left to me i would advise we leave production to the basic farmer the the basic farmer when i say the basic farmer i mean the the farmers who do not have so much exposure and education but who have the techniques to farm we can give them the support let's give them the technical support let them keep farming we who call ourselves youth call ourselves exposed people who says we are well traveled they say we are well educated we are professionals let's go and look for markets let's go and look for collab collaborations let's go and look for people who will invest in market in, in um, preservation and processing it's, it's even going to be a source of um, um export income 
for our country, for us as individuals, as citizens. We produce like 80% of the food that the developed countries eat. Yeah. We sell our we sell our raw materials to them, we sell our produce to them, the process. And we, we still because because of things are so bad, we go back to the supermarkets to buy them and say so we are buying imported imported food. We are eating imported food. It's disgusting to be honest. It's disgusting. So I think a lot of people should start looking. You don't have to be a farmer by force. You don't have to be a farmer to be in the agribusiness sector. You don't have to be a farmer to add value in the food value chain. You, you, you could have the technique. Yes, yeah, some people have the techniques. Some people have the resources. Some people have the connection to the people who can invest, to the people who have the technologies. I think we should start thinking of collaborating, of doing stuff together, and making preservation and processing a reality. So um, this this is the part where harvest, harvested fish is preserved or processed for storage or later use. This can be done by rural producers. It can be done by other business investors. Fish blasting is one major system of preservation that that enables export. Because for instance, countries like Dubai and some other um, developed countries, they need lots of catfish. But of course, we can't send it to them live, and we can't call them to come and start picking. 100 tons, 50 tons, 30 tons. When my own harvest is, when it's time for my harvest, I'll say, please come from Dubai, come and pick. I have 30 tons, I have 100 tons, I have 150 tons to sell. Then next time they again, they will fly again and come to somebody else's farm. No. But if we have a system, if we have systems, freeze blasting preservation systems in strategic places where we take them to and then those people get them from there. I think it's going to do our economy a lot of good. It's going to improve our lives as individuals in the agribusiness sector. Then, um, okay, there is the smoking or oven drying or whatever. That's another part, of course. There is the local market for that, and there is the international market for that as well. A lot of people are cashing out, cashing out in that um, aspect. Then we have the the fillet. Yeah, of course, it's it's still mostly the international sector that needs the fillet as well. We have even this ready-made processing, the ones you you eat when you go out for your night um, livestock, the barbecue and all of that. It's also part of it. So these are places we need to start looking into. You have the techniques, you've read about it. You can you have people who know these things, who know the techniques. You know somebody who has money to invest and um, doesn't even know what to put it in. You can talk to them, we can collaborate and do this together. Um, once again, I'd like to say welcome everybody. If you came late, I'm sure you'll be able to catch up. I've pinned the topic here, which is basics of catfish farming. And I've been talking about um, catfish farming, choosing your niche, and all that. So um, I'll go straight to marketing and sales. This is another broad aspect. And like I said, they are usually intertwined. You see that marketing and sales also would be intertwined with hatching and breed hatching and breeding it will be intertwined with preservation and processing it will be intertwined with um, growth so there's loads and loads of opportunities there's loads and loads of um, things to look into in the catfish business so marketing and sales is another broad aspect in fact marketing and sales also it's also when you sell feed you buy feed from feed companies and so it's too you're still contributing to the value chain you don't have to farm everybody does not have to farm I'm not saying we shouldn't farm or produce I'm only just saying there is lo lots more to it. So um, it's another broad aspect of catfish farming. Without growing fish, you can be in the agribusiness value chain just by marketing and selling catfish, either live or processed. You can la last with farms in your location to help market and sell up. Actually, for people who have been asking me, I want to go into catfish farming. I do not have money. I do not have access to loan. I applied for loan. I didn't get it. Last with farms around you. Some would even... Have, can even give you some um, payment repayment plan or something some might you can be doing it and be receiving commission selling without like uh, there's something people call drop shipping in another aspect of business yeah you could last with farms market for them sell for them get your commission commission and smile on by the time you save money you can also begin to do stuff on your own then um you can buy process and sell yeah i know some people all they do is they come when the fish is ready they buy they take to they don't even have processing facilities. They take to the processors. They have a baby 15 hour package or something. They smoke the fish. Pack it. Package it. 
and go and sell up to supermarkets to to um, direct uh, consumers and all of that the opportunities are limitless then packaging and presentation will go a long way this is what the basic farmer might not do you can do it the basic farmer might just farm you go and farm buy them and do this packaging and presentation will go a long way to give you an edge in this sector you can also involve in sale of fish seed and fish feed to farmers so that's another aspect of it um then there's the recycling and the circular economy so in the world that we are now a lot of developments are happening innovations everywhere in a bit to save the world yeah if, if you don't understand the world is at a high risk and a lot of people are beginning to do anything to save the world climate change global warming food um, food security is an issue there's hunger there is poverty there's food waste yeah there's no food and there's still food waste that's because of this problem we have with processing and preservation so there's a lot of people are beginning to invest in and um there have been sdgs campaigning hashtags zero waste hashtag no poverty hashtag zero hunger etc and a lot of individuals government and non-government organizations have been sponsoring and partnering with innovators who can come up with ideas to recycle waste especially agricultural waste many companies are investing in this as well and virtually everything in catfish is useful the bones the intestinal organs the viscera fat all of this can be recycled to make important products for human and animal consumption and they are very very vital in manufacturing industries yeah you may need to go back home do some assignment and you see there is so much you could do with waste from catfish catfish especially so that's another sector you could go online you would see a lot of um youth doing things i i belong to a social enterprise that um, we've been able to work, to do some homework on the visceral fat of catfish oil and um, we put in in a competition recently that's the top for food challenge and we even made it to the shortlist and if not because of this um, coronavirus pandemic now we ought to have been in Malaysia now for the summit yeah investors um, and all that will be there so you see there's a lot a lot of opportunities yeah we made the the oil out of visceral waste 